So welcome everyone, it's great to be here in Glasgow and of course a warm welcome to everyone who's dialing in from around the world. So we've got a great lineup of some really fantastic speakers today and we're going to be discussing a whole spectrum of chemistry including everything from green energy, plastics recycling, biocatalysis and more. The potential for new technology options. The decarbonisation of natural gas. Low carbon construction material alternatives. Help decarbonise uh, things, especially transport. Greener and more sustainable ways to make medicines. Science can really lead the way to, to tackling climate change. Today's event has been organised and coordinated by the Society of Chemical Industry. What I think is really important and what we'd like to highlight throughout the session is that while we often hear terms such as disaster and existential crisis when we talk about the issues of climate change, while we do face an absolutely massive challenge to deal with, this does present young people and in particular young scientists such as those on our panel today with a great opportunity to get involved in some super cool chemistry, some really, really great science and ultimately make a really big difference. The three themes that we will be discussing today are Help decarbonise things, especially transport. By using this plastic waste and giving it a second life, we can avoid these carbon emissions going into the atmosphere. Enzymes are nature's catalysts. 60% of today's youth feel overwhelmed by climate anxiety. As a result, we wanted to showcase the work that our scientists are doing and how it can impact climate change. So without further ado, what do you think is the biggest challenge you're facing to implement your climate change solution? Working collaboratively with big organisations is probably our biggest challenge. For us at the moment, it's a bit of a technological challenge. To get enzymes that are fast enough, stable enough. Everything that we do has some kind of an environmental impact. Until the last decade, the world has not cared about CO2 emissions. They've just talked about caring about it. So obviously we've not got the infrastructure, certainly, for fuel cell vehicles. Even small changes that we can identify for our products have the potential to affect large-scale change. How do you challenge the industry? You know, is there hope? There are solutions being developed. It's developing now because we have a desire and a push to decarbonise. We've made a commitment to move away from fossil-derived chemical in our home care product. It's definitely gaining ground, we just need to demonstrate it. There's the, the feeling and the excitement of change. The technology is uh, really getting to a place that hopefully soon will be a lot more visible for everyone. There's been a lot of talk about there being too much talk and not enough action, so hopefully we've demonstrated that there is action and it's, it's happening now and it's going to continue happening. Uh, and it's being driven forward by young people such as our, our panellists today. SCI have some great events and initiatives planned, such as the Bright Idea Challenge, which is open now, and also the Side Talks, which cover a range of topics, including climate change. We'd just like to thank our sponsor for today's session, Johnson Matthew, for helping to make this event possible. You know, the discussion isn't over. It's the end of the session, but hopefully not the end of the discussion. So thank you, everyone.